I'm sure you got yourself thinking, Bitcoin is here to stay. I mean, between the wild price swings and the booms and busts, it's sometimes easy to wonder if it's on life support. So instead of looking at how cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum exist, let's look at why they exist. <music> So a lot of cryptocurrencies can be a bit gimmicky. I'm sure you've rolled your eyes at cryptocurrency XYZ that puts task ABC on the blockchain. And for a lot of meme coins, you'd be rightfully skeptical. And the fact that there's a new coin offering literally every other day does not help the fact that it's difficult for you to navigate what's scammy, what's a fad, and what's here to stay. If you've ever taken a business class, I'm sure you've heard your savvy part-time lecturer part-time entrepreneur professor tell you that the most important component of a new business plan is a pain point or rather identifying a pain point. And that's a good place to look to give these cryptocurrencies the good old sniff test. Let's talk about the OG cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and what pain point it tried to solve. And to do that, you wouldn't need to look further than the timeline of Bitcoin's emergence. Bitcoin emerged around 2009 as the handicraft of one so-called Satoshi Nakamoto. Nobody knows who that is, but I'm just saying, no one has seen Satoshi and me in the same room. And now, while I may not share the same room with Satoshi Nakamoto, I do share my time and effort with you folks, my subscribers. So like this video and hit that subscribe button. It will ensure that you stay ahead of developments in tech and understand how these developments affect you. Anyway, timeline for Bitcoin. Bitcoin emerged in the wake of the 2008 recession that saw the collapse of the US housing market. Now, if you haven't lived through a recession, I will tell you this. It's easy to look at numbers such as the unemployment rate and think of these numbers as only data points on a chart. But behind these numbers are real lives that get affected and sometimes unfortunately lost. Apart from suicides, from the loss of livelihoods, there were also indirect effects that were very heartbreaking. For example, in the year following, that is 2009, there were about 260,000 cancer-related deaths and several of them were because of the fact that people couldn't pay for their treatments. And while folks on Main Street suffered, the big banks whose recklessness led to the housing bubble in the first place walked away scratch-free. And this struck a nerve. They were the folks responsible for making sure our financial systems stayed healthy. We trusted them with our money and they let us down. Bitcoin emerged as a response to this frustration at these intermediaries and centralized authorities. It isn't the technology behind Bitcoin that makes it so popular. It's the need and willingness of people to adopt it. I mean, blockchain technology is very cool and it enables a lot of things, but it's simply a means to an end. But Bitcoin's applications are very specific. In fact, you'll only hear of Bitcoin in the context of money transfers. But blockchain technology or distributed ledger technology that allows this peer-to-peer -peer transfer of money possible without the need for a central guarantor also makes other things possible to be decentralized. And in 2015, a young prodigy by the name of Vitalik Buterin recognized this opportunity. He noticed that new projects that were trying to remove a centralized authority for a wide variety of different things were being forced to build their own blockchain networks from scratch. And this was making development very, very slow because at its core, the same distributed ledger technology that stores the data required for the exchange of money, the transfer of money, can be used to store data from a wide variety of different sources, be it traffic data or social media data or, or location data, you name it. There was no need for everybody to build out their own versions of the blockchain network. So he built out a universal blockchain network that allowed other projects to build on top of this blockchain network for their own individual uses. And that's how Ethereum came about. And since then, there has been a boom in the development on the Ethereum network. People are using dApps or decentralized applications built on the Ethereum network every day, and more and more developers are getting skilled in the frameworks needed to build on the Ethereum blockchain network. It is a trusted network, and there is a tremendous amount of mining interest. Mining is how data gets added to any blockchain network, and therefore, it's kind of the lifeblood of any blockchain-based application. And because of this persisted and compounding interest around the Ethereum network, I believe it is here to stay. Come around next week. Thank you for watching. I might discover the origin story of Batman next. Who knows?